Question six, Karen Whitefield. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Executive what steps it is taking to maintain and improve bus services in light of recent decisions by bus companies to withdraw commercial services from many communities. Stevenson. The Scottish Government is committed to promoting the use of bus services in Scotland. We are taking forward a number of initiatives with local government partners and bus operators to maintain and improve bus services. Karen Whitefield. I am grateful to the Minister um, for the Government's commitment to bus services um, in Scotland. However, is the Minister aware that in the SPT area, a recent package of bus service cuts by a major commercial bus operator required subsidy to maintain minimum socially necessary services equivalent to 6% of SPT's annual subsidy budget? Therefore, can the Minister tell me what steps the Scottish Government will take to ensure that bus services are maintained and specifically what assistance you can give to Strathclyde passenger transport. Minister. Uh, despite the £500 million cut in the funding available uh, to Scotland, which of course uh, would have been a £170 million cut for local authorities, as the Cabinet Secretary discussed this morning, we are seeing funding for local authorities rising uh, by 2.9 per cent compared to last year. It is, of course, a matter for local authorities to determine how they spend their money in the light of this uh, significant increase and a higher proportion of uh, the overall budget of the Scottish Government now available to local authorities. I hope they will take the appropriate action. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Is the Minister aware that some bus operators are cutting services in the borders in Pennycook because of loss of revenue due to the Edinburgh tramworks? Does he share my concern that borders buses are on the same basis excluded from Edinburgh bus station, leaving passengers and drivers literally out in the cold with lack of security and facilities at Waterloo Place? And does he agree that this should not continue? Minister. Um, I wasn't aware until now that uh, these bus uh, services were excluded from Edinburgh bus station. I will be meeting, uh, I'm planning to meet, I should perhaps say, uh, the leader of the City of Edinburgh Council in the very near future to discuss uh, a range of issues of mutual uh, interest. Uh, and that, I think, uh, would be one issue that I would seek to raise at that time. Patricia Ferguson. Microphone, please. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In view of the apparent inability of the commercial operators to provide stable bus networks, I was going to say in my own constituency, but given Ms Graham's intervention in constituencies across the country, would the Scottish Government consider granting powers to the public transport authorities to resume directly operated bus services? Minister. I, I think one of the interesting powers that has not yet been exercised, which the City of Glasgow Council is pursuing, is statutory bus partnerships. In support of that, we have recently published uh, guidance and advice that will be helpful to authorities who wish to take that route, which is available. And of course, the appointment of a bus, uh, senior bus development uh, officer is already making a difference to the capability uh, to support bus services across Scotland. And I think that in the first instance, those two uh, ways forward are likely to be those that deliver early and most useful successes. <laughs> 